What's up guys, Matty here. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a new plugin from Kazrock, which is a model of the Avalon 747. Now this is a plugin I've been excited to check out because I actually have the analog version of the Avalon 747 and I've been using it for years and I love it. I use my hardware unit for tons of different applications. I use it in mastering quite a bit for you know thin sounding mixes that need a little bit of warmth. Uh, the tube can do a subtle but nice warming thing to a final mix. It's also great on vocals. The the EQ on Avalon's is world renowned. It sounds super good for that super top high end. And the compressor works great on some vocals and guitars and basses as well. So in today's video, we will go over the plugin, check out the EQ curve, see how close or far they are away from the analog version, and then do some AB comparisons between the actual plugin and the analog unit. Let's go. All right guys, so here's the plugin here. It's pretty cool, it has the silver model and the black model and you can switch it right like this. Let's use the black model just because I think it shows up better on the video. Um, I have the silver one as you can see in the other picture, but it starts with the input and you know, you can boost the gain, turn it up, turn it down. You can add another 10 dB of gain if you need to. TSP is where the actual, um, it's a twin signal path. So you can either do uh, a, a two path or a discrete class A path. And that's what's great about it, um, especially when I'm using it for mastering. If I just need a little warmth, I will use that and it can add, add just the right amount that doesn't get too warm. Uh, this is your compressor attack, compressor release, or compressor threshold. Uh, this is to send the EQ pre-compressor. This way is EQ to compressor. Then you have this unique sidechain section, and it's it's a little funny the way it works, but you have two sidechains, basically, the low and the high. So, you know, you can change the frequency from 600 all the way to 10K, and here 60 to 1K, which is cool. Um, it's, it's helpful sometimes, you know, if you're using this on a master, which I don't tend to do, it's, it's a pretty, like pillowy compressor and, and and for a lot of my music that's not really doesn't translate too well on the master uh, maybe if you're doing like an acoustic thing it could be great but this works really well for vocals and acoustic guitars sometimes when they're a little too piercing you can use a side chain compressor to make it just tame down a little bit in the high high registers that it's you know sounding too piercing so this actually put the side chain in and that means both of them are active and then this is the side chain listen. So it's a little confusing the way it's set up, but that's that's how it works. Next is the compression, uh, that's your ratio, and then your makeup gain, and this is the compressor in, this is the compressor in and compressor out. This is the VU meter, just shows you how much compression you're, you're hitting. And then there are six EQ bands. These are pretty interesting. You have a low shelf, three bells, and then two high shelves. And this is where the money is for me in this plugin is the high shelves, especially for vocals and masters. It just gives a sheen that that I haven't found in a lot of other uh, plugins or, or EQs in general. Um, this is your output signal and then your output gain, and then you can turn the equalizer on and off here. All right guys, so first let's check out the curves on this thing and see how close it is to my hardware unit. Um, this is the Curve EQ Analyzer that I like to use. It's a free plugin. You guys should get it if you want to compare things. Um, so. If I boost this, you can see the green line is the plug-in and the white line here, as you can see, is my analog unit. So we'll we'll do this first. We'll boost the shelf all the way. There is the plug-in and now let me boost mine. And it is pretty close. There's a little difference here, but it's, it's not much. I mean, this is 0.48, it's 0.5, it's, you know, 0.3 dB. Not gonna probably hear that too clearly. Um, so pretty close. Let's go down to the second shelf. Now the second shelf's a little bit different. There's a little bit more of a boost here. If we bring it down a touch, we can get pretty close though. So that's 8.8, .8, 10. It's like a, a dB and a half difference. Now, you know, that could just be because my unit's a little bit different because it's analog. Whatever one they modeled, you know, that's what happens with analog. Things change a bit, so it's never going to be 100%. But that's pretty close. Let's go to the first bell. Pretty close. It changes a little bit here. It seems like mine's just like a little bit wider than the Q. You know, we're talking a small difference here. Next bell. That's pretty close. Same kind of thing though. Mine looks a little bit wider. Let's try the cut though right there. A little bit of a difference here. That's 2.4. This is 1.6. So that's almost a dB difference right around here. But same curve, same idea. We're, we're in the ballpark. The last curve, last bell. Now this is quite different. It's pretty impressively different. Look at that. Let's try the cut. 
Yeah, so mine doesn't cut nearly as much as this one does. I mean, that that's a lot though. If if you're I don't know if it's trying to be a one for one, then I mean that's a th almost a three dB difference. So interesting, but you know whatever. <laughs> I can't I can't say anything to that one. And then the last one, same thing. This this boost is quite a bit more. Uh, this is. 7.6, about 2 dB difference. But like I said, it could just be different analog parts, but that's that's pretty far off. But it's the same curve, same idea. Um, I, I'm sh pretty sure you'll get fairly the same tone, but it'll, it will be slightly different. So those are the curves. Some of them are close. Some, some of those last ones are a bit off. The low end seems to change quite a bit, uh, which is interesting. But let's take a listen. You know, analyzers can only do so much. We have to use our ears. All right, so let's do this acoustic guitar. Let's just make this simple. Let's turn the tube on, and the tube's already been on, but let's turn the tube on there and boost the second shelf and see what that sounds like. So as you can see here, hopefully you can see, uh, this is the plug-in. Green is the plug-in, hardware is the blue, so. So they're pretty close. There is a little difference. Sometimes I feel like there's just a little more low end thickness. I don't want to say, but like energy in the hardware version where the plugin seems a little bit brighter. And sometimes I like that. So it's kind of cool, like in a way, because it's like two analog units. They're going to sound a little different. Let's hear it one more time, though. The hardware just sounds a little bit more alive to me, but that could be my converters too, you know? Uh, let's move over to the bass now. All right, so for the bass, I've already set it up because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me change knobs, but they're the exact same. We're using the tube on both. The e, we're, So we're going EQ to the compressor because if you can see here, we're boosting the low end quite a bit. And so I want that to compress too, just because we're going to get that thickness, but we also want to not make it too crazy bassy. Plus this will help trigger the, the compressor a bit more. Thresholds cranked, fastest, slowest attack, fastest release. Uh, we're not using the side chain. Compressor's right in the middle, and then the makeup's not happening at all. Let's start off with the plug-in, and then we'll go to the hardware. So if you notice, the, it seems like the hardware unit's pushing a lot more. So I'm gonna dial back this compressor until it's kind of on the same ballpark as the hardware unit. So that should be a little bit closer. So let's compare them now. Okay, so they sound pretty close. It's, it's definitely in the same ballpark. I feel like you get a little more of the pillowy kind of warmth sound from the hardware unit. Um, I almost feel like the plug-ins compressor is just a little bit faster and a little bit different than the hardware's compressor. And that's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just different. It's not quite the same. All right, guys, so let's go to the vocals. I already got the settings set up. I had to push the input a bit more here. Using the same kind of attack and release here. Tubes in. 
same, same thing. We're going to do the EQ into the compressor. Um, thresholds cranked. Now we have the side chain in this time, uh, not using the low side, but we're using the high side right around like 2.5 to 3K area just to help get the harshness down just a touch. So that's what the compressor is going to be reacting to a bit more. Then the compressing, make up zero, and then we're just boosting this high end shelf. This is where the money is here. And before we go into the comparison, let me just play the plugin Pi Past and on and off, just so you can hear how good <laughs> this compressor and EQ actually is, regardless of if it's better or worse than the analog, whatever. But just take a listen with the bypass on and off. Last night I was out with the boys till two It's gonna take a whole month to make it up to you I guess my heart is just Like that just sounds great That that EQ is the money That's where like Manny Mariquin uses And a lot of guys use this Avalon EQ For that super high end sheen And so a lot of times when you want that sheen without the harshness This is the thing that they're using to do it Alright so let's now compare it AB with the hardware unit. We'll start like just like the other ones with the plug-in first. Last night I was out with the boys till two. It's gonna take a whole month to make it up to you. I guess my heart is just a little too wild. But this is who I was the whole time. You used to make it out to every one of my shows And now I'm begging on my knees to try to get you to go Well, if I'm lucky, maybe when I get back You'll be waiting with all your bags packed And So that's really close. Um, You know, I can tell a difference because I'm hitting solo and bypass on them But I would probably not be able to pick out what's the hardware and what's the plug-in Blindly, maybe, I don't know But the hardware does does a little bit of what it, I love about it more than the plugin is it does it's not as harsh the plugin is just a little bit brighter and like I wanted to say harsh because it's not harsh but it's just a little different where the plugin just adds a little bit more of that warmth and and that's the main difference I'm hearing between the two let's hear it one more time just to double check Last night I was out with the boys till two It's gonna take a whole month to make it up to you I guess my heart is just a little too wild But this is who I was a whole So yeah, same thing Just, you know, just there's a little bit more warmth and, and, and love to the hardware unit But like I said, I'm not mad at the, the, the plug And it's, it's really, really close all right, guys, so that is the comparison between the hardware and the plug-in of the Avalon 747. I think they did a great job. It's really close. Um, it doesn't quite have all the warmth that my hardware unit has, but I love my hardware unit, so I'm definitely partial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Which one do you like better? Do you think they're pretty close? Do you think they're really far off? Love to know. If you need your songs mixed or mastered and want your song mixed through my Avalon, <laughs> hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can find my courses and presets there, too. Talk to you soon.